Okay, um, I'd like to introduce Mark Willard. <coughs> Go to his, his bio here and talk a little bit about him. Mark's with, he's the Vice President of Humana. He's also the founder and president of Certified Data Systems. Uh, he comes to us today, he's gonna, he's gonna kinda talk about two, two sides, cause he, he's with Certified Data System, which is an HIE, but then also he's with Humana, so he can kinda bring two sides together here. He'll also be part of our HIE panel um, that we'll all be able to ask questions of, and the panel will be um, immediately following Mark. Um, Mark's been a successful technology entrepreneur, first founding ColorPass Corporation in 1989, a pioneer complex digital imaging. In 2004, while working as an entrepreneur in residence at Rico Innovations, Mark recognized that the absence of meaningful hospital physician interoperability was negatively impacting the cost and quality of patient care in the U.S. and founded Certified Data Systems. Through extensive research, several significant technical achievements, and adoption of technology from other industries, Mark developed a straightforward solution to connect health systems and ambulatory clinics using an edge server application. Today, Certified Solution enables health systems, cl system clinic interoperability at over 100 health systems and thousands of pro providers throughout the U.S. Following Humana's acquisition of Certify in November 2012, Mark assumed the role of Market Vice President responsible for Humana's HIE and ACO initiatives and continues to lead Certified Data Systems as founder and president. Mark holds an HND in electrical engineering from Surrey University in England. Thank you, Mark. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I do have a little bit of an accent, much like you guys do as well, so, and I tend to speak a little quick. You can slow me down. Uh, before I get into the, the big bag payer, um, I, I do want to talk a little bit about my experiences in the HIE business and kind of taken off where Rob left off. Um, it sounds great on paper, all these achievements that Certify's made, but I have to tell you it was one of the most agonizing journeys of my life, trying to get all these different IT vendors to connect and work together with, the, with a common goal of quite simply sharing patient information. And that challenge still exists today, and I believe this industry, and certainly groups like HIMSS, has to really help promote the non-siloed approach to even the, the largest vendors out there. And my, my role for the last eight to ten years has just been to try and blow those barriers down, find ways of removing bureaucracy and politics, and allowing for the good of the human race, effectively, the common sharing of data. And it has been an incredible challenge. Humana approached my company um, actually a number of years ago and became very interested in how, how can they use this kind of IP to connect their consumers, their members, and ultimately their patients. And at first thought, I thought to myself, well, is that going to be a good or a bad thing? And ultimately, I think it's a great thing. Um, but um, let me uh, find the clicker. Is it which one? Is it this one? Yeah, yeah perfect. Um, hopefully everybody's heard of Humana. I mean, the, most of their vast majority of their business is in the uh, Medicare, Medicaid space, about 70%. They're based in uh, Louisville, which I'm just learning to pronounce now. Um, their whole goal is to transition from what people think they are, which is a payer, an insurance company, to a health and well-being company. And if you uh, do a little research on Humana, you'll find out many years ago they actually started in the hospital business. And so it's kind of back to the future for these guys. Um, they're pretty interesting because um, if you look at their business model, they're much like a utility. Their margins are all capped, uh, which means that um, it's not all about trying to keep the profits. It's all about trying to offer great health care, and it's, uh, it's all about trying to lower the costs. Certify was acquired in, uh, in November of last year. And uh, the role of Certify is basically to go out and connect all of Humana's members. And in front of us, we have a, uh, a tremendous journey ahead. We have about, in the next 18 months to two years, sorry, maybe three years, about 1,600 connections, which could represent tens of thousands of individual providers. Um, our goal is to connect them all into one great big health information exchange. Uh, with the view of really making all this clinical data very transparent from uh, both clinical and also through to the claims data. Uh, we've achieved our first one, which I'll talk about, uh, about in a little while. Um, so again, it's the goal is to try and just bring the payers into the, 
the clinical world as quickly as we can. Um, if you think about the, uh, the cycle of health today, it really starts off with the patient, with the primary care physician, moving on, unfortunately, sometimes to the hospital. The payer is only ever seen as somebody that's just going to pay the bills or, ch or request um, delays in claims or not want to reimburse the correct amount. But really where these guys are is they're a part of the healthcare ecosystem. And unless we bring them in and unless we become very transparent on both sides, we aren't really going to affect care outcomes and we're not really going to be able to reduce the cost. So I see it as a really positive thing that people like or companies like Humana, and I talk like about Humana like they're not me. That's a real challenge because you know, I've just been acquired, right? Um, but I see it as a real positive thing that companies like Humana really want to get involved and really want to share the data. And our experiences just in the last six months have shown that actually both the providers, and when I talk about providers, I mean hospitals and, f and physicians. Um, I've, we've seen a lot of positive response from providers. Our members are also very open to this as well. Um, so um, it's a, it definitely is a rapidly uh, developing initiative, and I believe Humana is really taking a lead role to make it happen. Down to things like, will effectively um, upfront all the costs for all the providers to join. So, I mean, Bob talked about how much it costs to bring a, an EMR vendor onto, uh, onto an HA, somewhere between 300 and 10 grand. So we, as in Humana Certifier, upfronting all of those costs with the belief that downstream we'll see an awful lot of savings in, in, uh, in the model that we produce. Humana talks about a halo of health. So I, I would say the best way to describe this company now is somebody that's moving a little bit more towards a Kaiser model. Um, and so we feel like if we're going to play in the, in the ACO space, we need to either have providers that we own, and typically they're primary care IPAs. We need to have at-risk provider partners, so they're in the ACO, and try and move away from the fee-for-service. And that's, some, that's a journey that's going to take us many years to, to accomplish, um, but ultimately feel like we'll get there. And if you read the press release on Humana, you'll see that a lot of their recent acquisitions have actually been very large provider groups. Um, the power of doing this is we can present all the data. If we can get become involved in the ACO, we can help present all the data at the right time to the person that needs it the most. And that typically is the primary care physician at the point of his first encounter. And that's a blend of clinical data and claims data. We're not trying to hold the information. I think Bob mentioned the beautiful thing about, I think the beautiful thing about Certify is we're a federated play. So we're not trying to create a silo and say it's all of my data. We're trying to share it as and when needed. And if it needs to stay in your practice, it stays in your practice. So it's a very easy way of getting people to get on board with this whole concept of an HIE or an ACO and not feel like somebody's looking over their shoulder trying to collect the information. And really, all we're trying to do is promote this thing we call lifelong well-being. Um, today, most of the data, most of the information is around hospital-based claims or clinical data, and I call that the sick data. And we need to start collecting information about wellness and try and influence people like me to make much better lifestyle choices 10 years ago as opposed to now. I used to suffer from stress, believe it or not, doing a little startup. Um, and I found through, um, I'd call it health coaching, that um, breathing properly, meditation, and taking time out had a tremendous effect on my stress levels. Now that's something that if I walked into my primary care, he would give me I don't know what he would give me, <laughs> but I mean, I've been on all kinds of things to try and lower things, not blood pressure, but just make me feel and change. All it was was just coaching, and health and well-being is about coaching us to make the right choices, whether it's eat an apple and not a burger, whether it's relax, try and walk, and if you can get this right, you really can affect the way people operate in their lives. You can really affect the way they deal with their health as they start to approach their 50s and 60s. And so Humana is all about trying to promote its healthy living style. And they have this thing called the halo of health. I'm, if I walk, I'm, you might not be able to hear me. Um, but they believe that they need to offer very comprehensive care delivery. And this is why you'll see them walk out in the marketplace looking for primary care physicians, IPAs, that can become part of the Humana network. They've also acquired lifestyle coaching companies, a company called Hummingbird. 
And that's, uh, that, that organization is a 1-800 number for the members that will help them figure out their finances, will help them reduce the stress levels, all with the goal to try and make a happier person. We also have um, a company called Senior Bridge, and Senior Bridge is all about helping the seniors that might have a chronic condition, help them in their homes, offering them uh, caregivers, if there's a family member that's looking after them, offer them tools and ways to help. So again, it's trying to stop that person from just walking into the ER or the ED room when we believe that a lot of, a lot of the patients can be helped in their home environments. And then lastly, uh, we've acquired a company called Concentra, and they have urgent care centers all around the country. And again, that's about, you know, if I have a headache, maybe I should go to my urgent care center rather than the fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 it costs to walk into ED. So Humana is really trying to shape a different world for itself, itself out there, recognizing that this whole fee-for-service thing is going out the window, which is a good thing, and that now we have this health ecosystem which is all trying to share risk. So we have um, some really nice examples. I didn't make this techie. I'm really technical, by the way, so I'm struggling to make it non-technical. <laughs> but um, we have some really nice tools. Um, and this slide is trying to demonstrate that if we share information between each other, some really cool things can happen. Um, and some of the first sites that certifying Humana have worked with are very large uh, provider, net with provider networks with maybe 30 or 40,000 members. And we're able to supply the provider world, whether it's a primary care, a specialist, or a hospital, with uh, these clinical insights about me. So as the minute I walk in and check in, an ADT will hit the system and it will send a patient <coughs> summary about me. It will also deliver complete medical history on, my, on myself. It will look at, it will deliver uh, examples of all the lab tests I have, so we talk about not duplicating tests. Um, it will also, whilst I'm going through my healthcare journey, it will deliver what we call gaps in care alerts to the providers or the physicians that, that are currently seeing me and looking after my needs. Um, this, this is great because it does stop duplication in tests. One of the biggest problems that we see is medical adhesion. Just getting the patient to keep taking the drugs for the period of time they should. And by delivering promptly reminders to the member and also to their primary care physician, it helps a lot. So you'll see Humana at the moment is processing about 650 gaps in care alerts. So this is, this is data that goes into our analytics engine and we have specific rules looking for, sp for specific things to push out to the customer care reps at Humana or the care managers or the providers. And you can see based on this, about 200,000 messages sent to the members to try and make sure they get on a path. It might, be, it might be me where they say, Mark, have you, um, you gone for your walk this week? Because we have something called Vitality where I log things, right? So it's a very interactive process. And about 35% of all the gaps that we send out are closed. Now this means savings for everybody in the, health, in the, in the chain of events for me. So it's, um, it's a really powerful tool and it's something that that I believe should become very pervasive out in the industry. And you know, part of my challenges on this is just the uh, stress that we go under to, to get an epic, or a, I love Cerner, but he's gone. But, <laughs> but the stress we get to get epic and Cerner and ECW and next, you know, the list goes on and on of just saying, look, this, this is great. When everybody here is gonna benefit. If we call it data liquidity and the currency, and let's make sure we can trade it promptly. But these are the kind of results that that, uh, that we're seeing and they're pretty powerful. Now I have a little video, because uh, I think the best way to kind of describe the Humana vision is, and it's not even their vision to be honest with you, it's actually happening now, it's just to show you this journey of a guy called Tony. And then I'm gonna open it up for questions and I can get real techie if you want. So hold on a minute, except for this piece. Let's see. It's only a couple of minutes, but it, it's a decent Humana story. Is embracing a better it's not sales pitch, okay? More efficient and more effective. It centers around the individual, and it's making it easier for people to get healthy and stay healthy. And it's changing the way people experience healthcare. Currently, traditional healthcare systems revolve around sick care and paying for services rather than paying for better outcomes. Take Tony as an example. He's a busy guy who is overweight, he doesn't really eat right or work out, and he's never paid much attention to any of the wellness programs he's been offered. Oh, and he's a smoker too. Tony does have chest pain on occasion, 
and he's even gone to urgent care centers because of it. But it always turned out to be nothing major. One night, Tony's chest pain is worse than ever before, and he decides to go to the ER. Because the ER doctor doesn't have any of Tony's medical files, he runs a variety of tests and brings in a cardiologist who decides to keep Tony overnight. It's all very scary for Tony, and expensive too. So here are some important questions. What if that emergency room doctor had access to Tony's medical records? Would that lead to better treatment? Humana says yes, there is a better way. And what if Tony had a primary care physician who had been helping him manage his overall health? Could he have avoided a visit to the emergency room? Or if Tony did have to go to the ER, could he get faster, better treatment if his ER doctors were able to consult directly with Tony's primary care physician? Humana says yes, there is a better way. It's called integrated care delivery. Integrated care delivery means that a variety of healthcare professionals are connected by a powerful network of information and armed with insights driven by data. This network enables each provider to offer the best solution for each individual, and the primary care physician is at the center of it all. Humana Integrated Care Delivery goes beyond treating illness. It's designed to help people live healthier lives and plan for a healthier future. It means meeting every person where they are, sick or healthy, and making sure each individual has a positive experience. It's a personal mix of preventive care, emotional support, care programs, education, and online and mobile tools working together in a 360 degree approach to health and wellness. Welcome to Humana Integrated Care Delivery. Better efficiency and better overall care for everyone, including Tony. So this is the vision that we have and we're currently executing on it. It's free for the members, the providers. We're supplying all the technology. Um, we use all the standards that, that CERNA talked about, all the IG profiles. We like to um, be able to set up a full bi-directional connection with all the members or not, sorry, all the providers that are involved. We have um, currently a number of initiatives on the way that as a patient walks in, an ADT message is sent to us. We immediately, within seconds, turn around and send a complete continuity care document back. We aggregate from every other source we have as well, normalize and create a CDA. When the patient finishes their episode of care, uh, we also receive the clinical information back as well. And the results we're seeing today are actually showing that we can drive down costs an awful lot. And so, um, I'm happy to answer um, any questions that you might have. I'm not a healthcare policy guy, okay? I'm a techie that's helping connect all the dots for Humana, but I'll go for it. So why don't, if anyone got questions, just um, speech out. Humana oh, is embracing on. a better approach. There we go. Morning, Mark. Morning. Do you know if you're sharing the care gap information with um, not only the patients, but also with their care providers? Because I think many times um, patients don't only you know, see their primary care physicians, but they're also seeing specialists. And I just see that as an opportunity for engagement. Uh, I'm just curious as to what the strategy is around sharing care, care gaps with not only the patients themselves, but also with their providers? Yeah, well actually the, the, uh, the majority of the gaps are shared with the providers, all the caregivers. The patient sees a, um, um, something that's easily more understandable than clinical data. But the, the idea of this is the gap in care will hit the EMR's workflow. So we've gone to uh, a lot of lengths, lengths with uh, Cerna, Epic, and Next, and those guys to actually embed it in the physician's workflow. So the answer is we do. Um, outside of their primary care physician, so many times maybe they're seeing a, a, a specialist or um, someone outside of their EMR. I mean, there are many times, I'm, I'm guilty of this, I don't always see my primary care physician. I, you know, I just see who I need to see when I need to see them. Mm -hmm. And I'm just curious, how prolific is that sharing taking place? I understand how the EMR can work to proactively mitigate some of those, but 
you know, well, it's everywhere. So if 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 they if I decide to go see um, um, a cardiologist before my primary care, the cardiologist is on the Humana network, which they are because I'm in network. Then immediately they start typing my name to admit me. The ADT will come out to us and we'll send the information back. If if they're on a system that isn't fully integrated they can kind of use our light EMR, our portal, and actually go in and see the aggregation happening in real time. So everybody shares it. The only time it w this wouldn't work is if, um, if they're outside of the Humana network or they're not on our HIE. Sure, I can hear you. Yeah, okay, um, basically out of all this, how is this affecting IT at the hospital level and the physician level and the work that it's putting it onto the current IT staff that's there to acquire new skill sets? It's like connecting from, a, from the IT folks, it's like connecting to another NHIE. So it's, it's using XDS technology. So for example, to connect to Lacey, it would be exactly the same to connect to Humana. Um, so yeah, it's gonna have um, some impact on them. Uh, we did this large epic installation in six weeks start to finish. That's extreme. <laughs> um, but we wanted to prove that it can happen and we, we help an awful lot. So we'll supply uh, project management, QA stuff, whatever we need to just take the burden off that IT group. Um, but they, will, they do have to participate. The challenge isn't the health system. They tend to have um, enough resources to do it. It really is getting down to the small docks that, um, that's, that we struggle with. And as Bob said, trying to get the uh, smaller vendors who, who can't share data or have no, in you know, he said they take nine months to return a phone call. Unfortunately, that's, that's kind of sad, but it's the case. So is Humana reaching out to all of their larger hospital clients and physician networks to get connected? Yeah, they're launching. Because our IT people will have to con work with you to make that happen, right? Right. They're, they're launching. They're really, ugh. They are reaching out to <laughs> everyone, whether it's large or small. Um, one doctor offices very large health systems. In fact, I think um, Kansas is on the radar screen as well. But they, were, but they are, yeah. And we have a, a controlled project. So my team has um, invi Humana's invested over 10 million bucks in us just this year alone to put a dedicated team in place of physician outreach people, project managers, um, business analysts. I think they're the first um, insurance company that's doing this. I am just thinking that with limited resources where I'm working and all of the initiatives that we have going that <coughs> get in line. I mean, I, how are we going? Where's the incentive to move that up, you know, for us ab ahead of all these other projects if we have 85 projects going on? Well, the, the incentive for you guys is if you're in a risk-sharing partner with Humana and also the Hedis Star Awards as well. Mm -hmm. And I think <laughs> as far as, as get in line, it, it, you know, it should really be the case that, that once, you've s once you've set up a, let's call it a, a, an IHE or an XDS repository, it should be, should be, a lot easier and part of what we need to do is educate the other vendors out there that they should make it easy. I, I came out of the commercial insurance world before this and um, I connected Lloyds of London up, all of the brokers um, on both sides in a matter of six to nine months, the whole marketplace. To do the same thing here in healthcare would take about 10 years. So it, you know, it's not, it's not a challenge here of technology and it resources, it's the willingness for for the vendors to do it, and which what blows my mind is, I don't even. I mean, I hear, well, we're not going to connect with you because uh, we don't see why we should. This is a vendor talking to us on behalf of a provider. Well, I want the provider to put his hand up and say, "Well, I'm sorry, but you know, I run my own life. The last time I checked, maybe my wife does a little bit, but <laughs> <laughs> so that that's that's to answer your challenge." But if you don't have resources, th which a lot of the small organizations don't, then we'll put people in to help make it happen. And I w the vast majority of our time, I would say 90% of it, is outside of the, the provider's world anyway, is setting up the information behind the scenes. The last piece is the QA. But it's not easy. 
I thought it was back in 2004. I was wrong. <laughs> Any other questions? What do you guys think about the payers getting involved in this or Himara? I mean, how do you guys feel about it? I mean, I've been acquired, right? I mean, I said, when I walked into industry, the, the small provider said, the hospitals, and then the hospital said, no, it's the insurance companies. I'm like, God, I'm never going to go to an insurance company. But how do you guys, do you think it's, um, I mean, you've got Certify now, and you've got Medicity and various others being acquired, and these insurance companies are coming to town, and they, they really want to get involved. Is that a good thing? Well, Mark, I, I can start that a little bit. Um, the insurance companies and the hospitals have a lot more resources available to them to make sense and value out of the data mm -hmm. that's in the systems. And that information has been used to set rates. Right. And so right there is the crutch of it all. And it's interesting, I wrote, wrote some notes and I'm, I'm looking forward to this discussion with the, the HIE panel here. Um, we talk about data being the new cash, if you will, of the healthcare system. And we have to share it. Mm -hmm. In what world outside of the, well, I guess in a communistic world maybe, <laughs> but not in capitalism, does everybody share cash? There's always an exchange, which is really apt term for what we're going to be talking about with health information exchange. But we have to understand the value of that exchange. What, what is it that we are getting for sharing that data that clinics and, ho and hospitals view as their data, not the patient's data? So that is, that is the big crutch and the challenge to that. So that, that from the healthcare provider and hospital system space, that's what we're struggling with. Yeah. So, so the one thing I've learned with Humana, and it's like drinking out the fire hose, is their their uh, desire to go at risk share is is huge. And so, m I, I, when, w w you know, when you talk about that, I just think, well, I, I, you know, I sit in all these meetings with these folks on, okay, we're going to go at risk. That's great. We've got to get away fee for service. Uh, it's killing us. We can't grow. We're a utility. We have eight percent that we can work within. Uh, if we truly can go at risk and we can bring the cost down and, we sh and the only way to do that is to share the data, then let's go ahead and do it. And um, that was a surprise to me because, you know, I've been programmed like everybody here that the payers are bad. And when I sold my company, the biggest thing I thought was, oh, crap, I'll lose all of my clients. <laughs> um, but it actually hasn't happened that way. So to s for these guys, I think they're in a bit of a unique situation because they're in the Medicare space a lot, 70, 70 plus percent of their business. So they truly are incented to do it. Um, but yeah, great. Well, I'm, I'm really happy to be presenting. This is actually my first one of representing the green companies, I call them. Um, and I'm very pleased to participate in this. Thank you.